Hey guys, so I've been wanting for quite a while to make some videos that you can watch at home on your own time about how to use your MySonet software. So today is going to be the first video of however many it takes to make us learn our software. <laughs> so today's lesson is going to be really basic. It's basically going to tell you so show you how to open your software and some of the things that I may say during an actual lesson that you will need to understand. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started and we're going to do that by double clicking on our MySona icon on our desktop. This pulls up a menu and you'll see it says embroidery. If you double click on that, it does open up your software into the embroidery module. But you also have another one that says tools. If you double click on that, it brings up the other modules that are inside the software. So if you have the MySonet Platinum, you can access all of these. If you have MySonet Silver or Gold, the only one you can access is Configure. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on that and that's gonna open up our Configure window. This is where you would go to do anything that was directly to like set the settings for your software. So here's your MySonet account. So if you have the software, obviously you have an account. If you're just now going to go get the software, then you would register. Um, you can reset your password if you've forgotten it from here, and you can imagine you can manage your MySonet account from here as well. So you want to make sure that you have your email address, your registered email address, and it says status for me is signed in. If I wasn't signed in, it would say password would let me type in it and it would say sign in versus sign out. My computer. So the MySonet software is um, dongleless, so you don't have to have that key that unlocks your software. You actually have a code and you can activate and deactivate your software. So what's really cool is you can deactivate it from here. So let's say that I knew that I was going to use my third computer. So I'm going to, I would sign in, I would come to configure, I would deactivate, and then I go activate on my other computer. If you go to the MySonet website and do manage my account, you can actually deactivate a computer from online yourself, which is so awesome. I've had to use that feature quite a bit. So that's what this is for. You can own having the MySonet software, you can only have two computers activated at any given time. However, you can activate and deactivate at will, meaning that if you have four computers, if you're not using two of them, you can activate the other two or whatever, but that's how that works. Utilities. So these are your tabs and we're on the utility tab now and that's thread cache. Thread cache is where you go to enter all your thread colors. Check for updates. Um, this You can go here and check for updates. I will tell you that it does pop up every time you open your software if there's an update until you update. Um, back up my settings and restore my settings. There's certain settings inside of the software, um, such as your thread cache, and I'm not sure if thread cache saves. I want to say it does. Um, anyway, I'll have to figure that one out and let you know. But certain other things are in there, and um, if you back them up, if you have to uninstall your software, you can restore them as well. I have never done this. Um, I'll be real honest with you. I, I really don't care. Um, if my settings are saved, I can just go redo them. It's not that hard. Quick Font. You can access Quick Font from here. You can also access it from the software. Quick Font is one of my favorite things about the software. I love it. I love that I can go out on the internet, download software for our fonts for free, or pay for them. You know, you can do either way. I have done both and you can make them into embroidery fonts. It's super cool, super easy. I love it. I will say that some fonts work better than others and some fonts don't work at all. Um, but we will do a whole little thing on quick font later in the, as we go along. Start my Sonet Connect. If you have, um, Sonet enabled machines, so Wi-Fi machines, you would do that here. And when you do that, it puts a little sewing machine on your um, uh, bar at the bottom of your computer. <laughs> it's late, guys. I'm sorry. Um, reset all modules. So let's say you go in and you do um, 
you change your grid size, you change your appearance, which we're getting ready to do or show. And, and you're just, you're like, oh, I just messed it up so bad. I want to, you can reset all modules and it'll go back to fa factory settings. Reset file association. Um, you can reset your um, embroidery files to go with the MySonet software. Um, you can do it this way. You can also do it through settings. Um, I actually don't have the um, Explorer plugin, which is what it calls it, which shows you the icons installed on my computer. So until <laughs> that's why it says that um, until I do, I, I can't really use that. Um, it doesn't, I don't really use it anyway. Um, so it's not a big thing for me. So that's why that's not them. But anyway, <laughs> You don't have to do it, but if you want, you can reset your file association. So anytime you double click on a design, it will open directly into that software that you specify. Um, I have multiple softwares on my computer, so it doesn't work for me. This is your appearance. So your background color defaults to a pretty light blue. Light blue is easy on your eyes. I do recommend keeping that. Um, sometimes you can do some really crazy colors I mean, you can do a whole entire rainbow and the problem is, is if you get some colors that can hurt your eyes, um, it's just not as good for you to vision wise. Um, you can do texture. Oh, and by the way, I do white for you guys. So when I print lessons and things like that, it's less color ink you have to use. Um, I also felt shoes better. You can change the way it appears. So like if you can see this, I don't know if you can, it looks like little eight o'clock. So cross stitch cloth. Um, fleece looks a little fluffy, um, silk, not a whole lot of difference from woven, just a little bit. Your grid, I chose black. I wish it was darker. I wish there was an option that could make your um, grid darker, but there's not. Um, screen layout. This is actually changes the color of your screen. So see how this is this teal color. Um, I'm not sure if that's my computer settings or in there, but once we open the software, I'll show you. Um, but there's blue, tan, teal. I had it at plum once, plum's pretty, um, but I'll go with teal, it matches my other stuff. Um, real size, the measurements, if you measure this and put this measurement in, whatever this measures, you put that in here and it'll show you in real size. Mine is not 26, I don't care. Uh, I use the grid to, to know what size it is and visually it's not ever really on the computer. I, I, I just don't use it. It's a personal preference. If you guys wanna use it, by all means, measure that little thing and put that number in there. Color, cut out applique background. You get to choose what color your applique is. I picked the kind of peachy color and you can also make it a different texture. So you can do that textures again. And then you can just make it solid that has no texture. Um, so I don't, I always keep it open. So anyway, that's that one. Import. This is your thread ranges. I like Rose and Anton Rayon, so that's what I use. Export. Um, so these are your default settings. Every time you export, you're going to see this screen. You're going to see different aspects of this screen when you are exporting. Um, I default combine and remove overlap lap. I never, ever default color sort. Color sort can mess your designs up. I do a lot of in the hoop designs. And if I accidentally made something the same color, because when we change colors, it's a stop, but we'll get into that later. But if I did that and I color sorted it and those two combine, my whole entire design can be ruined. So I never default color sort. And I actually don't recommend it. It, you know, if you if you want to color sort, that's fine. You can do it before you even hit the button export. So anyway, the other thing, decoration, we're gonna get around to that hoop and orientation. You know, doesn't really matter. Splitting for multi-purpose, you can do that when you do splitting. Um, export file name. Um, so when you save a file, like when you do a design file and you save it, it is a VP4 and you cannot change a saved file to anything but VP4. When you export the file, 
and you can choose what file format you want. So VP3, PES, DST. But what this is asking is when you do that, when you export it versus save, they're asking you if you want this word exported attached to it. I think you can even change it. Yeah, you can change whatever word you want. I do not do that. I just type in my type, my name, or what I want my file to be called, and I change it to its format and I export it. Um, but it's totally up to you. If you want to know, it, it does get a little confusing if you export it as VP4 versus saving as VP4. But if you export your files as VP3, you're never going to get the two confused because you have VP4 and VP3. So you have one as a saved and one as an export. But we'll get into that when we start saving. There is an OK and apply. It works the same way. Apply sets the changes. OK sets the changes and closes the box. We're going to go ahead and just close the box. And I know I went through that really fast, but um, like I said, this is just a quick like overview. A lot of this stuff we're going to get into deeply when we start actually doing lessons. So embroidery, this we're going to double click on that to actually open our software. OK, so there's that teal color I was telling you about. And if you chose plum or whatever, that color would reflect there. OK, guys. So this is the screen you always get when you open it. It has current projects. So anything you've been currently working on will show up here or anything you've even opened. You may not even have worked on it. You might have just double clicked on it and opened it. It will appear here. You get welcome new window. New window opens a completely another window. It doesn't it leaves the original one open and gives you a new one. Um, open opens up the design and puts it into the hoop. It also closes anything else. So if you're working on something and you click on open and you choose a design and say, OK, it's going to close the one you were working on and open the design that you chose. Insert puts it in there with it. So it opens the design into your working area. So do keep that in mind. And again, we're going to work on all this in detail later. Save, we were talking about that. Save saves. Um, the first time you save, it'll ask you to name it. If you hit save again, it'll just automatically save it as that name. Save as lets you change the name at every time that you say it. Export, that's what we were talking about earlier. You actually get to make some choices and then send it as a stitch ready file. So it kind of like gets rid of shorter stitches, it optimizes everything, it can color sort, which we already discussed, but it also removes background stitches that you don't need and things like that. So you always want to stitch out an exported file. Export applique pieces sends it to a cutter. Export decoration templates sends it to a cutter. Send sends it to your Wi-Fi enabled machine. Print prints the design preferences. Um, you go in here, this is where you have your spelling, so you can check your spelling and you have different languages for that. Um, remove overlap and combining embroideries. Again, this is like the, this will be is the third time, the second time today, and it will be the third time you see, can change that. Applique, applique piece margin, I always change, set that when I do it, but you can overwrite it and you can, you know, just do it so that these would override whatever you chose before. Configure, again, that'll take you to that configure window. And then exit makes you leave. So blank canvas comes available to all silver, gold, and platinum users. Um, Express design, photo stitch, Express monogram, word sculpt, quote block, spiral, family tree. No, I don't think family tree comes in that. Maybe project in the hoop. All of those come in gold and platinum. Silver does not have access to those. And then you have your platinum ones, digitizing, cross stitch, and sketch. Those are exclusive to platinum. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click on blank canvas. The minute you do that, everything goes away and your hoop pops up in your, on your screen and it looks like you're getting ready to do something. It's also one of the things I do kind of like about this is that it does pop up with the hoop selection. This is new to my Sonnet, and I really do like it. Um, 
it, it's a good feature. It, you know, instead of having to come up here and hunt for it, it's automatically there. Normally you're doing a different hoop, so pretty easy. And then we just say, okay. And that's gonna take that change and put us into our hoop. Okay, so basically right now, your software is ready to go. You've changed your hoop, everything's good to go, so you are ready to use your software. So I'm gonna tell you about the things that we see on the screen that we're going to do. So <clears throat> everything up here, file, home, create, encore, letter, super design, those are what are called tabs. So when I'm doing a lesson, a lot of times I'll say, click on the letter tab, click on the modify tab. Well, that one didn't work because I don't have anything. <laughs> the view tab, you get it. So each one of those, once you click on the tab, then this is considered the ribbon bar, this area right here with all the stuff underneath of it. So a lot of times I'll be like, click on the home tab and click on combine. So the first thing you're going to know is home tab and then combine, you know, is going to be somewhere in this section. It is right here. All these are grayed out right now because I just don't have anything in my hoop. Once you have something in your hoop and it's selected, all this stuff will highlight that you can use. Excuse me, sorry, it's getting late. <laughs> so, tabs, ribbon bar. You have the create tab. This is the second place that you can go that you can get all of those really cool things that we have. Um, the monogram wizard, express design wizard, and we are going to do each one of these in depth. So, maybe not family tree. I don't like family. Not that I don't like family trees, but it, it's really janky. Um, <laughs> well, ha I might have to show it to you just because it is janky. Love cross stitcher, love digitizing sketch. Sketch is really kind of cool. Um, I've actually had my little, my screen is touch screen. So I used the sketch module and had my son like sign his name and then you can digitize it and things. So it's kind of fun and it, it you know, we'll do it. We'll do it. Don't worry. Digitizing. Oh my gosh, we're going to have so many of these. I love digitizing. It's one of my favorite things to do, but there's so much to learn on that project in the hoop. There's so many of them, but we'll go through them and we'll, I'll pick one and we'll do it. Spyro is a new one. That's a lot of fun. Um, did a Christmas tree with it. Um, it, it's, it's just fun. It reminds me of when you were a kid and you to have a little spiral thing. Anyway, uh, quilt block, I use a ton, a lot, a lot, a lot. I use that one. Word sculpt, mm, I use word sculpt differently than what a lot of people do. Um, they use, they leave this border. Anyway, we'll get to it. <laughs> but photo stitch, I've had so many people ask me about this. We are going to do that. And I'm going to use a photo that you can also download too because I want you to see what kinds of photos work. Some photos you just won't get a good, good stitch out with. Express design, we're gonna do that. And express monogram. Express monogram is okay. I, there's some janky things about that too, but we'll get to that. Encore, we will do this. It just basically creates borders, frames, custom frames, things like that. Letter, we all get the software because we wanna do lettering. We wanna put names on things, we wanna, monogram things. This is it. And there is a new feature called name changer and it's pretty cool. Um, if you don't have like little grandkids or little kids, I mean, I guess if you're having a wedding, um, it's cool though. I'm going to show you how to do that font manager. You know that you go in there and we can use the quick font. This is a font that I created using quick font. And I love it. I have used it a couple of times and it stitches out great. I absolutely love that font. Super designs. Awesome. But my new favorite, if you saw my Facebook post, it has emojis. Can you believe it? I love emojis. Every post I have has emojis in it. I'm an emoji loving person. Um, I was a little offended by one of the other educators that said, um, or one of the Viking educators that said, oh, kids love these. I'm like, mm, I'm definitely not a kid. <laughs> I love them. But um, to each their own. I like them. I think they're cute. Um, frame, you can do a frame, applique, embellish, modify. Oh, again, we don't have anything. Ooh, let's go grab one of these super designs just for it. Let's do 
the oh my god one. And apply. There he is. Oh my gosh! Okay, so then you can come in here and then you can see the modify. Oops. Okay, so one thing about super designs, we're gonna do this real quick. Super designs are not actually designs until you fix them as stitches. They are actually editable until you fix them as stitches, but we're gonna fix it as stitches and then I'll show you something. Okay, so what you can do with this is you could come in here and you can get rid of certain colors and then you can draw a box around something and you can delete it. And now he has no mouth. Um, but that's what you can do. Now, did you notice before that the handles were green? Here, I'll undo it. You can see the green handles. See how the handles are green? That means that I'm in still edible. So if you watch the numbers, so I'm at 80, 96 right now. If I drag this up and do whatever I want to it, it automatically adds stitches without doing resize. Super cool. And it'll fill those stitches in. So. But then, oops, went too far. Then if you fix it as stitches, those handles go away. And so now they're white and it's not gonna have that same feature. Okay, view, if you take any of my classes in person, you know that we come to the view tab a lot. I sometimes wonder if you get annoyed with me because we do it so much. Um, but I use the grids for everything. It, it gets you the exact size that you want. That you want. If you want some, something three inches, set your grid square at, I think it's 25.4. Oh, what the? No. Okay, you're supposed to be able to hover over it and it's supposed to tell you what it is. Let's try it this way. There it goes. So it's not one inch. Ugh. I wonder if it's only in. See, and that's a little big. It is. It's like 25.4 or 25.6 is actually a one inch perfectly. Um, either the update took away my ability to do 0.4 or do decimals or it's only available in digitizing and digitizing is where I change the grid an awful lot. So I'm hoping they didn't take my decimal away from me. I'm going to be so mad. I got to go check that out after this. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you can get length, you can measure things, but I don't think it's accurate. I'll be real honest with you. Um, but you can use that background wizard. You can put like a t-shirt or something in here. I don't use that. I think it's kind of silly, but that's my personal opinion. 3D view, 3D realistic view takes away my grid and everything. And then 2D view makes it look more like stitches. You can change your hoop in here. You can show the design panel. Oh, that's what we got to do. Design panel. This is another thing that's really important. When I talk about things, I will talk about the design panel and I will talk about the film strip. So the film strip is on the left and the design panel is on the right. They do different things in different modules. Like the film strip in digitizing is where it's all at. And the design panel, eh, it just gives you some information, but it's where it's at. Whereas here, when we're in modify, we don't have that film strip. We only have the design panel. So we can only make little adjustments and things like that. Okay, so recap real quick. These are your tabs. This is your ribbon bar. This is your film strip to the left. To the right is your design panel. This is the stitch count. This is the, the design width. This is the number of colors of thread. This is the stitch or the design length. These are all your colors that you have. And if you hover over them, it tells you what they are. This is the change color. So if I click on this and I click on that, it'll change the color. You can also double click on the color and you can right click on the color and say change color. So you can, you can change color three ways. So when I tell you to change that color, you sh there should be no doubt on how you're doing it. Um, these would move the design, the color up and down up, 
down. This merges colors, notes and settings. If you wanted to make a note that said, OMG, oops. OMG. Okay, maybe we have to be in the modify. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, it helps to do edit. <laughs> okay, back to where we were. All right, some days. Okay, so this is showing you what it says. These are the settings, and this is the edit, and this is where you would go to say OMG. Emoji. And you can say okay. So then if you were, let's say we did this and we put OMG or whatever. If you wanted to search your file explorer, you could actually type in OMG emoji and it would pull up this design. Um, even though you didn't have to even name it that. You could name it something um, like let's say we did letters and we said love. And we applied it. Okay. And we named the file love. But it would also be searchable with the OMG emoji. So I hope that makes sense. It's something I don't use very often, but it's there. Clipboard. We all know what a clipboard is. That's when we cut something, it goes down to the clipboard. And then we say paste. But if we click on the clipboard, it makes it go away. So no matter what, make sure that if you want it gone, it stays gone because undoing it does not bring it back. Okay, guys. So I think I've gone over everything. Oh, the help tab. You can click on help. It opens up a internet or a web page and you can come in here and look at help for a project in the wizard. It gives you an overview what the projects in R, all, just all kinds of stuff. If your pop-ups are blocked, this will not pop up and then you'll have to call software support or fix it. Um, about my Sonet, this is the version history and this is the version you are on. And if you do call um, software support, they will ask you what version. Make sure you're up to date to get those emojis. You have to be on this version in order to get those cute, super cute emojis. Okay, guys, I think that's it. You have your little quick buttons up here. Insert, save, save as, export, print, hoop size, so you can change your hoop there as well. Undo, redo, life view. You can see what it would look like in stitching. That's that weird little thing. You'd have to use modify to get rid of that. I will teach you that one day. And then we also have the, um, design player, and you can actually see how it stitches out. But we will also mess with these later on as well. Okay, guys, so the most important things you should have taken away from today is how to open your software, where you can go to get, if I say open your digitizing module, the different ways of getting to that so that you're not struggling. Um, again, if you just open this, digitizing's right here. If you're already in your software, Digitizing's right here. You can also do it in the tools. Um, these are your tabs. We click on our tabs. So if I say home tab, you click on home tab. This is your ribbon bar. Once I say click on your encore tab, if I say repeats change to seven, five, you know that it's going to be in the ribbon bar. So you're going to always want to look here for your next step when I tell you to go to a um, tab. Um, this is your film strip. You can change design order there. This is your hoop. This is your design panel. This is your stitch count, design width, number of color threads, and stitch length. Okay, guys. So hopefully that gets you ready for our next lesson. Um, I'm trying to decide if we're going to go for the create tab or if we're going to skip that one so that we can do it later or we might do like one off the create and then do like encore one off the create and then the letter. Some of the tabs aren't as fun as others, so we might combine them, but it'll get you used to doing everything. And one day soon we will be doing really fun stuff and making all kinds of cool stuff. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's kind of quick and kind of just kind of a
get to know your software type one. Um, we'll eventually talk about the MySoNet library as well. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. You can follow me on Facebook, um, Stitching with Stephanie, and also Instagram. Uh, I think that's it, guys. Next week, next Thursday, I'm going to try to get that video up sooner. I was working on two videos today and had some issue, ran into some issues with the block of the month. But other than that, that's it, guys. Take care.